This beginner level video will cover bringing apart into Delmia's ShotFloor programmer, defining tool paths, and simulating material removal. To begin, we need to bring the part we're going to machine into the 3D Experience platform. The platform will be where Delmia finds and stores all of your manufacturing files. There is a link to the part we'll be using in the links below. The name of the file is cuts.sldprt. Once the file is on your computer, load the part onto the platform by pressing the plus sign in the upper right hand corner of your screen. Then select import from the pull down. Navigate to where the file is located on your computer and click OK. The part is opened in a new tab. It is now saved in the platform and we can select it for machining. Switch over to the first tab. On Open, Delmia creates a tab that contains an empty manufacturing cell. The manufacturing cell will be the environment where your programming will happen. A manufacturing cell contains four things. A machine, tooling, accessories like rotary tables or fixtures, and a product to be machined. We're going to use the wizard to populate this empty cell with what we're going to need to generate 2D toolpath on this part. The wizard will appear on the right side of your Delmia window. If you don't see it, select the question mark in the upper right hand corner of your screen and select Shot Floor Machining Wizard at the bottom of the dropdown. The first step is to import the part into the machining cell. When I press the Import Product button, this pop-up appears. You will see this a lot as you use Delmia. This pop-up is asking for a selection from anywhere in the Delmia environment. You can select from objects in the current tab, objects in other tabs, or even from the search menu. Right now, this is asking to select a part to be machined from anywhere in the environment. I can switch tabs and select our part to machine from here. The next step in the wizard is asking for machine specifics and if we're using any other accessories. For this exercise, we'll be using a generic machine with no accessories. We will select the three axis machine and select OK. Now that we have the part and the machine we're using, let's define the rough stock we're starting with. Because there was no stock imported with this part, we need to create a box. Select the rough stock button. Then press the select part body button and select the body to be machined. It will default to a bounding box in X, Y, and Z. Press OK to accept the stock. Now we'll tell Delmia which is the part and which is the stock. Click on the Edit Part Operation button. First, we'll tell it what our rough stock is. I will select Rough Stock and then select the bounding box I just created. You will see the prompts at the top of your screen that help show what the program is asking for. I will double click in the window to close the pop-up. Now I will select my part body. You can see that as I hover over the part, the wireframe highlights. Select the part body. Double click in the window and then select OK. The next step is selecting a tool to use. You can select existing tools or define one manually. For this exercise, I will define one manually. Once a tool is defined and saved in a specific file, it is stored on the platform. That tool will then be available for use in all future programs. Click the Resource Creation button. Here I will select the second icon to create an end mill. A generic tool is displayed with its critical dimensions. I'm going to rename this to something that I can find later for reuse. There are a few different ways to modify this tool. You can double click on a dimension to directly edit it. You can grab the handles at the end of a dimension and drag it. 
Or you can see a list of dimensions by pressing the Edit Parameters button in the pop-up window. By clicking the Geometry pull-down, you can enter all of your dimensions here. I'm going to be using a quarter inch end mill for this exercise. Press OK and close the pop-up. The tool is now loaded into the session of Delmia and is also stored in the platform for future use. We have the part to machine, the tool for the job, and the machine to cut it on. Next is selecting the geometry to machine and set up the operation parameters. Under the prismatic machining tab across the bottom, I'm going to select pocketing. At the top of the window, Delmi is asking where in the program you would like to put this operation. Select the manufacturing program. Delmia will ask for which tool you'd like to use. We will select the tool we just created. On new installations, you may get this pop-up. Delmia is looking for a complete tool assembly. To program using just a tool with no assembly or holder, we need to go to our preferences. Click on your icon in the upper right-hand side of your screen. In the pull-down, select Preferences. On the left, you're going to select the App Preferences tab, then Simulation, Machining, NC Machining Apps Common Services, then Resources. In the Tool Search category, turn on Allow Selection of Simple Tools in the Activity. Hit OK. To open the operation, just double click on it. It's now asking us for a tool again. I select the tool we just made. Now Delmi is asking if we want to find a tool assembly. Select No. Looking at the top of your screen, Delmi is asking for input to define the bottom plane for the toolpath. These two buttons are great tools for automatically defining islands and contours from a bottom plane. Because we are just selecting the plane and no geometry, I'm going to turn them off and select the plane. I'm going to rotate the part over and select my bottom plane. Now you can see at the top of your screen that Delmi is asking for the geometry to be machined. Select an edge of the inside pocket. Then select Navigate on Belt of Edges to close it. Then press the green check mark to close. This window is your operations parameter window. We've given Delmi enough information to create a toolpath. Hit the display button to see the toolpath. We now have a simple toolpath. Hit escape once to return to the parameters window. All of these parameters will be covered in later exercises, but I wanted to go over the layout. The icons across the top are categories. The first one is your resource or tool. The next one is the geometry to be machined. The third one is your strategy or how the tool is going to remove the material. The fourth tab controls the angle of the tool as it moves. The fifth one is where you set your approach and retracts as well as other non-cutting moves. Then finally your feeds and speeds. Hit OK to accept the toolpath. Next, I want to create a profile contour path around the part. Down in the prismatic machining tab, I will select profile contour. If prompted, Select the operation in the tree we want it to follow. I will now turn back on Automatically Detect Contour and select the bottom plane of my part. To see your toolpath, press Display. To get back to your parameters window, press Escape once, and to accept the toolpath, press OK. To simulate the entire toolpath, 
click on the main manufacturing program and select Compute and Check Toolpath. The simulation options are at the bottom of the tree. Here, you can set visibility of the toolpath and stock geometry. If you do not see a solid representation of your stock, select this button. To run the simulation, press play. I can see from the simulation that I have a gouge. I will need to add approaches and retracts to the toolpaths. Exit simulation by clicking here. To edit an operation, just double click on it in the tree. I'm going to click here to adjust the approaches and retracts. I'll put approaches and retracts on both operations. You can edit the approach or retract by selecting an option from the pull down. I will now simulate the toolpath to make sure there are no more gouges. That is the end of lesson one.